Hello friends, welcome to An Abundance Books. My name is Julia and right now I was preparing to film my best books of the year but I'm not feeling in a good mood so we're gonna do worst books instead. I just had a crummy day at work and <laughs> I want to bring my most enthusiasm for my best books so let's talk about some clunkers. These are the 10 worst slash most disappointing. Technically worst but like if I'm disappointed by something that feels like it knocks it down this list. I believe that these are all one and two star reads and we'll talk through it. This is a ranked list so let's go ahead and get started with number 10. Which is unfortunate because it was one of my five star predictions, Upgrade by Blake Crouch. Now this is a fine book. It, there's technically nothing wrong with it. I just didn't connect with it. The theory in here is this guy gets upgraded, basically it's a limitless pill, and throughout the course of the book he becomes the strongest, smartest person ever, and it just fell really flat for me. It felt very superhero-y, but in a, a, as an excuse. Like there would be puzzles in here, and like the first puzzle maybe, th there was a puzzle in here about the Fibonacci sequence, and he's like, I remember everything. It's like, a, a good number of people just know what the Fibonacci sequence is. You can just use math after that point. But then all of a sudden there'd be a puzzle that was completely impossible to decode and they were all treated with the same level of like brilliance and eventually this character learns to turn off his emotions and it's just not compelling. Blake Crouch is good for a fast read but this is not one of his best in my opinion. Now number nine I feel really really bad about. It's The Mimicking of No Successes by Wonka Ann Older. Now the reason I feel really bad about this is because it's, I, I read an arc of this. This doesn't come out until March and I don't want to dissuade people from reading it. I just think it needs to find the right audience because I picked this up as a sci-fi book but it is much more a Holmesian book. This is meant to be Sherlock and Watson in space and gay but it doesn't quite follow through on any of those premises and I was just so disappointed in it. There's some interesting world building but this is a mystery and at the end of the book I still didn't understand what the mystery was or what the resolution to it was. I also just didn't connect with the writing but if you want something a little more I want to say both flowery and dry but like you know in a Holmesian style then I do think that there's a great audience for this and a bunch of people have been loving it. Just know that going in. At number eight we have The Steminist Connection by Allie Hazelwood. Now I read all of these novellas. They're, they're getting bound up now so I think it's called I Love to Loathe You something like that but I just read them as the Steminist novellas and I was doing it for a video where I wanted to talk about all of Allie Hazelwood's books but then I started Love on the Brain and made it like five pages and I was like I can't do it so that got scrapped but it meant I still had to read three of these novellas which I hated. I think Allie Hazelwood does a really good pitch but I never enjoy her characters and I don't enjoy the romance between them. Her sex scenes are also just like awful. <laughs> Having to read Big Man, Tiny Woman, three books, not in a row, but in a row, like, no. I also think that having them in the Steminist collection is just not something I'm very interested in. Like, I'm a person, am I in STEM? I think I'm a woman in STEM. I think I'm close enough at least. I just don't find that something particularly fun to read about. Like I already get it, it sucks. I don't think I'm going to be reading any more Allie Hazelwood unless it's for something. Number seven is In Case You Missed It by Lindsay Kelk. This is a book that I technically DNF'd. I got to around 60% and then I skipped to the end and wished that I had just fully DNF'd it. It's about this woman who is a podcaster or radio host and she's was living in the States but now she's moving back to the UK for a new job and living with her parents and stuff and there's an old boyfriend that she reconnects with and a new grumpy barkeep. The biggest problem with this is the old boyfriend is written to be toxic and like he obviously sucks but he sucks so specifically and it was just so frustrating to read why she couldn't see this like in real life I know blah 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 but th this is a book <laughs> and it was just too frustrating to read and I didn't really care about any of the characters and the banter was weird. I was really sad because I have loved Lindsay Kelk books in the past but no. 
not this one. Number six is The Lion Game by Ruth Ware. Now this is really disappointing because Ruth Ware has been in my best books and now is in my worst. The biggest issue with this book is that it's not about The Lion Game. There's a premise introduced basically just tell of luck and that's The Lion Game and then points are kind of determined but who's lying the points don't matter but that's not a part of the story at all. It's about all of these girls who went to a boarding school and now they're all coming back together for their 10 year reunion. And one of the girl's fathers had died and there's some mystery around that. It's extremely confusing and like not well done and none of the characters were interesting. In this one the main character has like an infant baby and it just cries all the time. And they're t constantly talking about what do we do with the baby and now the baby's here. Just leave the baby at home. It, it wouldn't have been that hard. <laughs> this was just such a slog to get through. It didn't have anything fun. The atmosphere was really lacking. Oh, I, I think there was a bit of atmosphere with it, but the atmosphere wasn't fun. It was just like this dingy town that's crumbling around them and it didn't live up to a book called The Lion Game, which should be so fun. It was not fun at all. Then at number five, we have Silver in the Wood by Emily Tesh. This is obviously a me thing. I'm not a fantasy reader, lots of people like this, but I found the loose magic system and the loose plot really not compelling. This is also a book that has a very hard shift at the midway and it just wasn't as interesting after that. It's got a very historical setting and I, th like there was nothing about this that I liked. <laughs> I know that it's a retelling of The Green Man which is a story I'm not familiar with. Maybe if I was familiar with it I would have had a better time but books should still stand on their own. Didn't like it. It has swiftly left my brain. And now we're into top slash bottom four which I actually own all of the books for which is doubly disappointing that I paid money for all of the worst books that I read this year. Remember this next year when you want to buy books this can happen. You can buy The Summer of Christmas an adorable beautiful illustrated cover. It's about a woman who's working on a movie in her hometown. They're making a Hallmark movie based off of her life and her ex is back. Wow what a great premise. What an awful book. <laughs> Every single review of this starts with wow what a great cover, what a trash book. The big thing with this is that it, it doesn't read properly. Don't be mean. The authors here are originally screenwriters and I think that maybe they were too in that world and couldn't translate it to novel writing. Like every scene felt really clunky and you never got into the flow with reading it. It was always a challenge. On top of that it's just stupid. <laughs> it's a dumb plot and the characters are dumb and they should not be together and you're just waiting for it to be over because they're shooting a Hallmark movie. Like you you know what's gonna happen. Everything happens exactly as you expected and it's no fun. Now number three. Number three hurts because I had very high expectations of this book. I thought it could really be a win for me but it was not. Portrait of a Thief by Grace D. Lee was not good. Now this is sold as a heist novel where they're basically reclaiming artifacts that were stolen from colonialism. Sounds cool right? It's an ensemble cast. They all bring their special skill to it very Ocean's Eleven with a historical racism context. Could not have been more dull. This is so disappointing and the thing that I always come back to with this is they spend a long time planning the heist and then the heist is fade to black. Like you actually don't know what happened and then in the next chapter you'll like kind of go back through the events but like it doesn't make sense and that's that's what you're reading a book like this for. It's for the heist and I just felt like the author wanted to tell a much slower smaller story but dressed it up in this heist thing and couldn't deliver on like the fun and action of that. Maybe it's just me. I think this was a book of the month pick so I think people liked it. It's also just so beautiful and uh, it makes me really sad. It's also amazing how this ensemble cast of like five people I couldn't tell you the difference between them other than like their jobs like the driver and the hacker and whatever. This hurt. A brand new hardcover 
that is my third worst book of the year that stings a little bit now the number two i read in january i'm pretty sure so a lot of my memory is gone from it and so i probably won't be able to speak as eloquently on this because i think that well okay it's bewilderment by richard powers so i think part of the problem with this is it has an ableist undertone overtone unclear that made me really uncomfortable and so not having the specifics on that i won't say a lot other than like i was very uncomfortable with this child who seemingly has some sort of learning disability or something and his father's complete refusal to approach it in any sort of medical sense or even like talk therapy they do this treatment thing that like does something to your brain it just felt very anti-science too which is weird in a book that is ostensibly about science it's a lot about um, the planet i think the main the dad is like an astronomer and it's a lot about climate change too which was just a bummer <laughs> just like obviously important but I, again I don't need it in my fiction. I think I just hated the main character in this and he's grieving dead wife obviously. He's grieving for her but like not being able to take care of his son properly and it was just not a fun thing to read and it sounds when I'm talking about it like a book that's on my favorites but <laughs> more about the anti-science bend that it took. This is also a Heather's pick which is like the CEO of chapters here in Canada. So I think this was one of their top 10 books of 2021. And uh, no, absolutely not. Like I'm, I'm worried about the people who read this and thought it was okay to go off your medication. Like <laughs> it's, it's not great. Amazing cover, bad book. Are we sensing a theme? I think it was also pretentious too. Like it, it thought it was saying some grand thing, but it's really about a, middle-aged white dude being a jerk. Sounds like a prize winner to me. See, I told you I was bitter. This is all working out for us. Uh, which brings us to the number one worst book of the year. It's A Wayland by Ramona Asabel. I read this for my rabbit vlog because there's a rabbit on the cover and that was the only reason. Like this is a me problem. I was looking specifically for rabbit books. I found a rabbit book and I didn't like it. Shocker. It's also a short story collection which I don't love um, and I, I hated I think every story but one in here. Fully hated them. Like there's one about a hand transplant but it's stupid. There's one about this like 17 year old going on vacation and he sleeps with an older woman and it's super weird. There's one about a girl whose mother is slowly turning invisible. Like this is just not the kind of book for me. I don't think it has very good reviews so I don't think I'm alone in this sentiment but it was just messy and clunky and I don't know what all of the like what the unifying theme was other than being bad and weird. <laughs> this is a very small book too. It's just over 200 pages and I dread it every time I had to pick it up. Like every short story was a slog and it's the same thing too where like you read one of the short stories and you're like wow I really didn't like that and then you have to do that 11 more times. <laughs> My hatred for this book knows no bounds. Should I keep it? I was gonna say I'll unhaul it right away, but maybe I need something to focus my ink on. I just think that this is one of the worst things that I've ever read. Even if it wasn't a me problem, I can't imagine people reading these weird stories and being like, oh yes, such such deep themes. This is another one where I think the author was like, wow, I really have something to say. And in the end, you really didn't have anything to say, but it took you 200 pages to say nothing. Alrighty, <laughs> so are we having fun yet? Those are the 10 worst books that I read in 2022. A lot of these books I do think have merit and someone else could enjoy them. I think I just need to be pickier in the future. Maybe don't pick up random books with rabbits on the cover just cause. But even my two and three spot were like winning suggested books. So maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. And I feel pretty good about that order. Normally on the favorites, I'm like, we could swap a couple of these, but I feel pretty good on the order, especially because when a book is bad, it just sort of exits my mind immediately. I'm getting a flashing light, so that's a good rude. I'm getting a flashing light so I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you so much for joining me. My best books will be up shortly. 
let me know how your reading was in 2022. Did we have any of the same worst books? Maybe your first books were my best books. There's always the chance that that happens. I've got some controversial picks. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye!